こんにちは。こんにちは。今日はですね、えー、神崎さんと私の番組ということで、まだビューアーはいらっしゃらないですけども、ゆっくり宣伝しながらという感じでいきたいと思います。はい、早速今、ツイッターの方でも書きますので。えー、あ今、流しました、ツイッターで。これで大丈夫なのかな、えー、放送を始めました。うん、ぜひご覧ください。いいよ、ありがとうございます。ゆっくり。わかりましたあれこれ画面って何どういう基準で切り替わるんですか喋っている方がおそらくそのパッと出てくると思うんですねあれなんか時間差で喋るの気持ち悪い<笑>この時間差は多分そちらの方で YouTube の方を見てらっしゃるからではないでしょうかあ今はいはいはい今 YouTube つけたらなんか結構時間差ですね10秒ぐらいは遅れているかもしれないですね、えー。まあ、突然のあれですので。え、ビューバーは何人いるかはどこで分かりますかえー、っとですねバンあの、ウィンドウの下の方に、思い切りゼロビューバーと書いてありますね。ウィンドウの下。ウィンドウの下今、なんか一人目の方が見てくださっているようで。あ、そうですか。はい。まあ、今日は、えー、神崎さんと私で、えー、番組とか、まあ、Oh, I thought that we would speak in English, so maybe we can speak in English too.、Yeah. So, how have you been, Mr. Kanzaki?、Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, I visited my, my parents uh, this, uh, today、um, because my father is in hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that.、Um, he's, he's old, so maybe he's kind of, you know, kind of coming towards the end of his life. Since you and I are of the same age, yeah. I guess that our parents are getting old. And、yeah. in fact, many of my classmates actually already don't have their parents. Right. You're.、Uh, Your parents are fine? They, 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 are, are, they live in Hiroshima and they are relatively healthy. Yeah, good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Many of my colleagues、uh, begin to have their、uh, parents getting ill, even in my、yeah. company, in the company that I work for. So. Yeah. Yeah, my, my father is 36 years older than me, so he's 84 years old now. Deep into his 80s. Yeah, 84, so it's quite, he's quite old. My dad is、uh, 29 years older than me. Yeah. And I believe my mom is like 26 years older than me. So they are still in their 70s. 70s. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so, how is your work? I'm busy these days.、Uh, what, do you, yeah. what kind of classes are you in charge of?、Uh, I, I, teach, I, I teach toy classes. How many do you have?、Uh, at the moment,、um, eight classes per week. No,、um, eight, eight classes at、uh, university. I work full time. And also, I, do,、uh, I have some part time classes、um, at different universities. So, all together, 12. Like、every day of teaching, do you use the same、uh, textbooks that you have to prepare? Well, or? Some, of the, some of the classes, yes, but、uh, not all.、So. Okay. 
Um, but this week, uh, our university is having a school festival, so I don't, I don't have to teach. Um, so um, I have more time compared to last week. Uh, um, so is the students are currently it is October, so many students already have I'm speaking of senior students who need to graduate next spring. Um, are they already kind of ready to graduate and start working? Oh, yeah, some of them, <laughs> not all of them, but, uh, well, um, fourth-year student, um, not, not all, all, not all the, all the fourth-year student, uh, found a job yet, so they are still, uh, looking for job, like, okay. uh, continue their job hunting, and then, and then, uh, um, some of our students, uh good and then you know uh, you know companies like them and then um many companies offer uh offer a, a place for partic you know a particular group of students but uh, some group of students never get job offer so like um um you, you know those um unlucky student or those who who are not liked by company they are um kind of having difficult time at the moment when uh i was in graduate school and when we were finishing up dissertations yeah we always had a star student almost uh, yes. The same student um, yes. gets offers from multiple uh, places. Yeah, that's Does right. that happen with uh, college students? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Um, no, no, the, 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 you know, the, the <laughs> a student are uh, very different in their, I don't know, their, their character and their ability and they are set to mind and then you know uh, uh, companies who, who, who uh, which are looking for uh, uh, new recruits uh, have particular um, you know set of value to to uh, uh, offer jobs so um, some student uh, suits that uh, suits the standards, but some some student uh, um, don't. So, yeah. Do um, you know nowadays people talk about uh, global? How do you say global? Uh, global skill or something? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, including skill sets such as obviously speaking English, but maybe other things. Yeah. Are students aware of those uh, skill sets as global skill sets and try yeah. to master yeah. them and appeal, using those, do they appeal to companies? Yeah, yeah, sure. And then um, quite a few of our students wants to, uh, want to want to get the job at uh, international company, foreign company, or Japanese company which has offices uh, abroad, but um, it's not easy to <laughs> to get get job. Uh, you know, it's not easy to get their ideal job. Uh -huh. yeah. then, uh, so, when we were, as I said, that you and I were of the same age, coming from Showa. Yeah. Do you have any memory of Shishoku Hatsudo? Well, yeah, well, uh, I didn't do any job hunting, but I remember that the time we are uh, at the senior, at, at, at the final year of university, Japanese economy was at its peak. And then, well, back then, uh, 
it was difficult it was difficult for company to find uh, find enough recruits so it was like uh, you know they uh, they beg us to uh, you know join their company so it's uh -huh. quite that's the opposite of yeah almost opposite of today yeah H having said that uh, it's getting better. The, the, the job situation, job market is getting better these days. Like uh, compared to two, three, four years ago, um, it's getting better, but not as good as our time. Um, there was a lot of pressure even back then to um, find a job as soon as we can yeah. during uh, senior year. Um, do you? Um, to go back in time, so you uh, studied in Britain for a while, and so I feel like because I was in Britain for three months in 1987, I feel like I kind of understand the kind of hungiki background and atmosphere of UK in 1980s or yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, how was your uh, experience in uh, Britain? Did you live in London? Yeah, I did. Well, um, I, I I went to London in 1991 after you know finish university and then work in a restaurant for one and one and a half years to save money and went to England. Um, yeah, the British economy was very bad at, uh, back then. And then, um, so well, th there are a lot of homeless people, and then wasn't um, yeah, they they have they have some problem, and um, always um. You know, a lot of I don't know, um, some cuts on public spending, that kind of thing. Did you find uh, uh, in British English they call it a flat? Did you find a flat in London, in the middle of the city? Well, I, I, at the uh, at the beginning, I did homestay, so I just um, uh, live in a uh, in a house with uh, with my host parents, uh, but then. Uh, I moved out after one one year, and then well, actually, I didn't live in a flat. Uh, it was called bed sit, uh, meaning that uh, well, I rent a room in a house, and then we share a bathroom and toilet. Um, but there's a small kitchen inside my room, so we didn't share kitchen. Mm -hmm. and it was called bed sit, not quite flat. Flat, you you, you have your own, um, you know, um, property. But um, um, back then, I paid uh, fifty pounds a week. Fifty pounds I th a week. I think back, back then, a pound is like two dollars. Sorry, one pound was like a uh, two hundred yen. So. 50 pounds of like each month per week. That's not bad. No, but no. Uh, it's, uh, and then that rent included all the utilities. And so, like a young man per month. So, was cheap back then. I, I had it uh, much more expensive now. <laughs> like. A, I... Did you live near any famous uh, areas? I have visited London. I do remember Buckingham Palace and uh, uh, Big Ben. Oh, I see. Um, well, the, the, the area I live um, was northwest <laughs> zone two. Uh, was about fifteen minutes uh, from Oxford Circus. Um, on Bakerloo line, um, 
Yeah, so so it's not uh, not the center, not the center, but not very far from the center. Back then, I actually visited uh, London in 1987, which is not too far away from 1991. Yeah, and I saw some uh, uh, street fashion, like people who are dressed as punk. But I guess they didn't really mean to dress up as punk. They just are uh, punks. Do yeah. you see people with like a real long hair just on the top, and they shave their hair completely on the side? Yeah, I saw them. It's like uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. And the rumor is that they also kind of smell too. Like they don't really, they don't mean to dress up, but they are just. It's just their lifestyle or something. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> There's a, uh, yeah, there are stranger looking people. Yeah. Not only punks, but uh, I don't know. Um, well, if you, if, if you go to uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call, basking, like a street performers, yeah, they dressed strangely. And then if you go to a flea market or some downtown area, they do some street performers I don't I, know, a lot of people playing guitars and songs in the street and you know try to get um, some money yeah I um, um, did you travel at all in Britain I myself uh, went to uh, Lake District Oh, yeah. you know, so all the way up to the city where the Beatles came from, which is uh, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. I didn't go to Liverpool, but I went to the Lake District. It was a beautiful, nice place to walk around. Very beautiful. Um, yeah. The way I did the travel is that uh, I, was at, I was at an English school in Eastbourne, if you know where it is. Yeah, I think it's kind of south of the coast, southeast or southwest. Yeah, I do remember you kind of add uh, um, alphabets at the end of the address, like S E or S A. I forgot what exactly. Right. Was. Yeah, right? that postcode. Is that the same as postcode, like Yubimango? Yeah, like a uh, in, in London, uh, postcode is like a S W five or. Uh, uh, NW nineteen, and SW stands for Southwest, and NW stands for Northwest. But the the rest of UK uh, different system. But uh, usually two alphabet and uh, two numbers, two or one numbers. I was explaining how I went to um, uh, Liverpool. So I was yeah. at an English school, and there were two missionaries from. Italy. Yeah. One, his, one guy's name is Diego, and I yeah. think the other guy was like John. And they said to me, "Hey, do you want to go to uh, Liverpool? We're just driving up there." So I joined them, oh. and so it was like a very quick. And yeah. it was very kind of them that they said that they were yeah. learning English in Britain before their mission to Africa. Oh, they I see. To just take a trip all the way north. So I joined them. They didn't even ask me for to pay for the trip, I think. Yeah. And that was around this time of the year because I remember even in Britain, people did Halloween. So it's exactly around this time of this year. I think Halloween is really this week. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, Tomorrow, is it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was really impressive in Britain. Lake District was very, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Like beyond imagination level, beautiful. And also, I saw uh, sheep. Yeah. And mist in the sky. And yeah. there was a coffee shop. I remember drinking hot coffee and looking at a beautiful scenario of sheep and nice natural nature, uh, green. How do you say? Meadow, maybe? Meadow, yeah. Meadow the stream. So that was very impressive. Yeah. yeah. Right. Liverpool yeah. felt like just a town. I mean, the mm. Beatles came from Liverpool, but there's nothing about the Beatles, of course, obviously. It's like saying, uh, uh, let's say, the 
one of the famous Japanese artists. Let's pick somebody from Tokyo, and I go to Tokyo. There's nothing about the artist. I think it's the same thing. I go to Liverpool, but I don't see anything about the Beatles in Liverpool. Yeah, and any just, any Beatles museum or that kind of things? Uh, there might have been, but I didn't even think about it. Oh. Yeah. One thing that I remember is diversity of their accent in Britain. It seems yeah, like, yeah. Uh, depending on the social class, you speak a little differently. Did That's you have right. any uh, impression about that? Right, people speak speak differently. So, um, well, I I attended English language schools, and then in, 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 I understood my teachers when they uh, speak in class, mm, more or less maybe 80, 90 percent. But uh, if I go to the market or in the street and, you know, talking to some vendors, street vendors, and they speak like, uh, you, know, you know, totally different language. So I had trouble understanding ordinary people. Um, English teacher and the BBC um, anchors, they, they speak very clearly, but uh, ordinary people, especially like uh, working class people, they don't, well, they, they have a um, particular accent, so it was um, kind of difficult to understand them. I uh, remember there's a big difference between like even in the host family that I was with, father yeah. and mother, they speak. I mean, they spoke differently. Yeah. And uh, I feel like uh, with a working class accent, they have uh, omits or T or say it differently. Like yeah. if somebody was introducing himself to me as my name is Peter or something, and I'm like yeah. P Peter. Yeah. His name is Peter. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, they omit T and they omit H as well. Like, uh, I, I was just uh, looking uh, at watching uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, you know, TV drama, new series, and then there's a, a taxi driver. He speaks Londoner working class accent, and then Mr. Sherlock Holmes, kind of. Mr. Uh, Holmes. So, it's the same as French, then, you know. Yeah, in a way, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it sounds like they're omitting, but they are still saying something. That sounds like H, but it's just different, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult to hear. It's just, um, uh, different from standard. Right. But, um, uh, but generally speaking, I feel like it's kind of difficult to imitate British English. Yeah. Um, to me, it sounds like this. I can't even imitate. I can't even. I can't even imitate. <laughs> that sound right? Yeah, they say can't. Yeah, that's right. Can't yeah. Even. And then instead of saying a, they may say I or oi or I imitate. I can't even imitate the yeah. y that is. But what was interesting to me was I was there for three months, and yeah. initially my host father sounded like he's so different. He said, to die, oh, yeah. my time to die. Yeah. But I got used to it towards the end, and I didn't even think about it anymore. Like, yeah. initially, I thought, this guy is really saying I yeah. instead of A. Yeah. But in three months, towards the end of the three months, I felt like I didn't even think. I got used to it. And then right. yeah. even when he was saying to die, yeah. I felt like he's saying today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Today. 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 Yeah. To die. Um, yeah, it's hard to imitate. Yeah. Is there anything else that I can do to my English to speak like a British person? Uh, well, um, you know, the uh, tag question, <laughs> tag question, um, in, in London, I, I think, I think it's, a, uh, it's kind of working class things, but uh, all the tag, uh, tag become in it. Lovely weather, in it. In it. You, you are from Japan, in it. 
we Let's met see. we we met before in it like uh you know instead of haven't you aren't you don't you do you oh, 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 everything become in it that sounds a lot easier and then uh, yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah. In it from isn't it but mm. uh you know yeah it was a kind of nice yeah it, it's kind of easy in it it's easy in it yeah it's easy in it that's great i would like to use that yeah uh, there are expressions. I know some distinctively British expressions such as yeah. smashing or uh, lovely. Yeah, right? lovely smashing. Yeah. Is smashing just smashing? Oh, that's smashing or smashing cool or smashing alone works. Yeah, smashing alone works. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I know that uh, I can. Uh, pronounce or enunciate R a little bit uh, kind of ambiguously like uh, instead of saying park I can say park yeah. slightly soft maybe yeah um, that's right and also there's some kind of British intonation I don't know how to say it I don't know how to say it but it sounds like this to me yeah, yeah, this sounds like British. <laughs> I can, I instead of can, I should say, uh, I can't, I can't, can't, yeah. can't, I can do that. Yeah. So, what happens to the sounds in that we, uh, like, ah, what happens to ah? I know, wait, ah becomes ah because it's like, I can't becomes I can't. Wait. Oh, you mean ah. like a, like a father or mass kind of? Yeah. Yeah. It just stays the same. Father is just father. Yeah, like um, if it's man yeah, like in of, America. Long R. Is it ah? It's R. Father. Yeah. Father. Mass. After. I like mass. Yeah, I like math. <laughs> I you yeah, say mind you. Yeah, mind you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would like to practice British English. Uh, do you know a film called uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrel? I have never heard of that. Yeah, I have. Um, what is it? I was just looking at that the jacket. Um, anyway, uh, it's. Um, I have somewhere. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, oh, here. Yeah. This is a movie called Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrel. That's a. I think it was, a, it was out late 1990s. Um, it's very interesting linguistically. <laughs> there are uh, different groups of character. So the one group speaks really Cockney accent, and there are two kind of uh, uh, burglars. They they speak Irish accent. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, different uh, kind of gangster, like a uh, you know Africa African accent. And also, there are uh, young, uh, young uh, men speaking like posh accent, like mm -hmm. uh, RP. So, both with different accent in one movie. It's highly recommended. Do you know uh, who is it? Guy Ritchie? Do you know that guy called film director Guy Ritchie? I don't know. He used to be a. He used to. You. He used to be married to Madonna. Oh, but Madonna was married to also Sean Penn. Is that right? Really? I don't know. What's up? Yeah. So. Yeah. They they got divorced three years ago, but. Um, I don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Like it. <laughs> What is your favorite British music? 
Oh, favorite British music. Well, I used to listen to punk rock a lot. <laughs> but I, I, I like Beatles, Beatles too. Uh, well, uh, be, well, I started listening to Beatles when I was at high school. Maybe we talked before, but um, yeah. um, that's, the, uh, that's how I became interested in English. How did you listen to the first piece of Beatles music? Is that like from the radio or from friend? a friend? A friend of mine recommended and he gave me a, a cassette tape. Back then we used a lot of cassette, cassette tapes. <laughs> um, Were you already interested in English or the Beatles was like a motivation? I mean, you wanted to study English after listening to the Beatles? Well, I, 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 I wanted to, I wanted to be able to sing Beatles songs, <laughs> you know, like a sing along. So, you know, I try to, try to, and, and also I, I try to understand the lyrics. Were you in all the uh, senior high school and first year, second year, or the third year? First year at the senior high school. Why didn't you um, listen to uh, the Beatles in middle school? Nobody recommended. Uh, <laughs> I listened to Southern All Stars <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at junior high school. I feel like it's the same with me too. In high school, maybe kids have more money to buy their own records and maybe they can uh, kind of recommend to each other yeah. what music to listen to. Today, you can just go to YouTube and listen to anything, but back then you need to own a record. Yeah. And or, your friends can copy. Yeah, that's right. And then there was some, there was some um, record rental shop. Rental that's shop. True. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I used to, you know, rent a record and then, you know, uh, record it onto the uh, cassette tapes and then I corrected a lot of cassette tapes. In fact, I don't recall if we had any rental shops in my area of Hiroshima because I grew up in countryside. I don't remember. Oh, I do that's... remember rental shop in college. Yeah. But, uh, but you are from uh, a big city. So, no, well, I, I was in uh, I, I was born in Kanagawa, but uh, rural area of Kanagawa. It's like a place called Isehara, which is one hour from Shinjuku. That's one hour yeah. from Shinjuku. Okay. Yeah. Do you know Simply Red? Sorry. Simply Red. It's a British oh, a band. Mm -hmm. uh, just the name. Um, <laughs> the I guitarist is Japanese. Sorry? The guitarist of Simply Red is Japanese, Kenji oh. Suzuki, and uh, oh. he has been in the band for many years. Yeah. yeah. American band? Or? It's a British band. Oh, and really? if you uh, listen to uh, their songs, I think you will recognize because they are famous, living around yeah. for like for 30 yeah. years. They have been popular since 80s or so. so. So what's your what's your favorite band? Uh, today I don't have any specific, but in high school I, you know, everybody was kind of selective back then because you have to buy a record or you have to know friends who have records. Yeah. Today, I mean, you can just listen to any music for free on YouTube, especially. But uh, back mm -hmm. then we were more selective, and people had uh, their favorites. Yeah. Uh, my favorites were hard rock bands like yeah. ACDC and uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Van yeah. Halen. Yeah. And I used to listen to Loudness, the Japanese band. That's oh, yeah. pretty uh, gaining popularity back then in 1980s. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I think I wasn't particularly listening to Lyric because I liked guitar work. But yeah. I was still reading, uh, how do you say, Kashikado lyrics. Yes. 
and uh, yeah. checking words. That's probably why I kind of enjoyed learning English. I yeah. think that today uh, many people study English maybe for for tests like a TOEIC and TOEFL without necessarily liking the culture of um, you know English yeah. music. But I think you and I, or many of us who continue to use English today, we have this foundation. We kind of started out liking the uh, culture first. Yeah, yeah. And then we kind of studied English naturally. Yeah. It's not like we had to. So I really would like to encourage people to do that too. Mm. Right, but um, I don't know. <laughs> We can't force them. <laughs> we can't force them to like something. So, so. that's precisely the point, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah, they have to really come to this on their own. Yeah, that's many, right. Many times, uh, many of us who use English or speak English advise things such as, "Oh, you have to speak it with native speakers, or you have to practice yeah. it every day," kind of stuff. But we can't really force them. <laughs> Right. Yeah. We didn't have to be told, hey, it's important to speak English to practice or to improve yeah. because it yeah. was kind of, of course, we liked doing it, but um, for people who don't really like English or English speaking culture, yeah, then it's kind of difficult for them, I think. Yeah. But do you know those uh, who, uh, those who are really into TOEIC, they kind of like TOEIC and they enjoy studying for the test and enjoy taking the test. So I think that's okay. You know, different people have a different taste. It's a subculture of, and subculture of, uh, uh, I mean, any subcultures exist, you know. Yeah. But TOEIC world is, I mean, it's a good practice for them to read things. Um, yeah. Because I think you cannot really translate when you're taking the test, right? You have yeah. to really read it and immediately understand without yeah. necessarily necessarily translating English in English English yeah. to Jap Japanese. But you can even on the body, it's just like that. If it's yeah. pure college entrance exam kind of English, there's some sense of we have to translate English into Japanese. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The TOEIC is more like straightforward in a good way, I think. Mm. Oh, speaking of TOEIC, uh, they're going to change uh, exam format from mm -hmm. next year. So it's a kind of um, kind of exciting news for us <laughs> because you know. Um, at, at the moment, there are a lot of TOEIC books on the market, and then those books will be useless in in a few months' time. And that's, then, horrible. that's horrible. Well, yeah. but then it's a kind of business chance for us if we publish a good book for the uh, new format, uh -huh. and then it's a uh, it's a great opportunity to you know make money. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, actually, the official announcement hasn't been made yet, but uh, uh, they're going to have a kind of information session uh -huh. next to announce uh, exactly what kind of change they're going to introduce. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, those okay. of us in a toy industry are really kind of half excited, half worried, kind of. <laughs> so what if people just published books on TOEIC like two months ago using the existing current format? What happens to them? Yeah, but, uh, uh, was, that was bad luck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, have, yeah, but they have seven months, seven months to uh, sell all the, all the stock. But it sounds like a good business opportunity just to you know redo yeah. your books and uh, if you have time and energy. Yeah. 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 Do you know the exact new format? The no, new not one? yet because it, it hasn't been there hasn't been an official announcement. But there are 
Well, e ETS did uh, quite a few monitor tests, and then you know they invite uh, those who to, who uh, have taken TOEIC to uh -huh. take the test, and then people who took monitor test told us uh, you know they they have such and such and questions in the monitor test. So we we kind of have a rough idea what kind of question questions were used in the monitor test mm -hmm. but then you know monitor test is monitor test so if ETS thinks it you know that that particular format didn't work then they're not uh, going to introduce it uh, include in a new format so I know. was a little surprised that you seem cool with the change because you've written a lot of books on this area and you may be feeling gosh it's a lot of yeah, yeah. Too much. Well, I, I, I feel that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But at the same time, if I publish a, a good book now, it's going to sell well. So it's a business opportunity too. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, ETS is not too far from my um, the kind of work I do because I yeah. am in educational research. Yeah. And I've been in this sector for many years and then when I go to conferences I do see ETS people who yeah. have been presenting on psychometrics and rash model and all this kind of stuff. They yeah. have a lot of researchers yeah, uh, doing things. So yeah. We were just talking before this um, our sh before our show goes on air we were talking about uh, uh, research kind of stuff in education so maybe we can talk a little bit about that too yeah so do you do you write papers yourself too or? yes yeah. Uh, yeah for example currently I am preparing to present in Chicago in November oh, uh, yeah. my colleagues and I have been working with one of uh, state universities in Alabama. We did, yeah. uh, we are working on an experiment yeah. um, to evaluate the uh, effectiveness of classroom technology on students um, uh, student outcome. And oh. We are dealing with forty eight schools, forty eight teachers, and uh, yeah. half of them received the intervention. So yeah. what we call treatment, they um, teachers like twenty, uh, I guess five of them had to take participate, mm. had to participate in uh, classroom technology workshops. Yeah, and the other half didn't have to this year. Yeah, and we are comparing test scores of students, half of them in the treatment group and the other half in the control group. So yeah. that's what we are. Um, Working on, and we are making a presentation on this yeah. uh, next month. I see. How many, how many students have you looked at? Uh, it's a couple sides. About twenty or thirty per teacher. Oh uh, right. And the teacher may be teaching more than one class, so we are sampling. We are taking about sixty students from each teacher. Yeah, and then you have 40 teachers, you say? Yes, close mm -hmm. to, oh, maybe 48. 48 teachers. Yeah. So you may be thinking uh, the number of subjects, um, okay, this many, and the uh, number of teachers, this many. In our setting, the number of teachers is more important than uh, number of students, actually, in terms oh. of statistical power. Yes. Yeah. So, um, we are trying to, I mean, the difficult thing about this kind of evaluation study is, I know, sincerely, I'm telling this stuff, teachers kind of <laughs> quit study, so that's what we want to prevent, because yeah. if teachers quit, then the sample size reduces, and that's not good. It uh, impacts the quality of work, so. Yeah. Is, is it like, a, do you uh, give them some questionnaire? Yes. Or, yeah. Questionnaires to um, ask them about the use of technology in class. Yeah. Because you would think the use of it increases as they receive more training. Yeah. yeah. There are different questions. The most important question we think is 
impact question, whether there was an impact of um, the intervention, or I can phrase it differently. It's like, is there effectiveness of this approach? That's one question. But the other important question is implementation. Did the teachers do what they were told to do or the, what they were trained to do? Yeah. The, the two separate questions, and we asked both mm. of them. Mm, I see. See, so in in the states, um, what what kind of new technologies are uh, used in classroom? You might have heard a flipped classroom. Uh, Sorry, flip. Flipped classroom. So, classroom and home are flipped such that kids yeah. may study uh, on their own at home by looking at teachers' videos. Oh, and they come to classroom to do more hands-on activities, experiments. Oh. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in reality, I think it will be the mix of the two. It's not like um, study at home and then do work in school. It probably is a mix of like home and school, but that's one approach we refer to as uh, flipped classroom. Yeah. Also, uh, we they you use a lot of uh, computer software uh, mm -hmm. in school. Uh, to, uh, yeah, to, I mean, it's a di slightly different issue, but uh, today uh, we, parents can check students' grade every day, any time of the day. And because on the internet? In, uh, yeah, on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, middle school, high school, like kids. I mean, in one thing that's very different between Japan and the US is that in America, kids have to do work, like in Japanese, we will call it printo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I homework? Kids yeah. in America have to do a lot of those all the time. Oh, yeah. Not just in class, but of course they have homework. Yeah. And every time they do these assignments, teachers are entering data into the system. Yeah. Yeah. So parents can check grades or homework, whether your child submitted homework on time, like 20, how do you say, 24 seven, like 24, day, 24 hours a day, seven yeah. days a week, we call it 24 seven. Yeah. So there's lots of data in education. Mm. And, uh, but I have to take up, I mean, I'm not sure if every part of the country is utilizing technology for education, but at least in this area, uh, uh, near DC, like we do that. Yeah. yeah. I think in, in Japan, they are trying to introduce new technology in class room, like, uh, especially for uh, teaching English purpose, like a special, special whiteboard, they call smart smart board kind of connected with a computer I don't know I, I, I don't use them so I don't know how to how, how exactly it works right. but uh, um, yeah so, um, some of us are not very good at uh, bunch or writing down everything you yeah. know teachers write on the blackboard yeah. So I understand that if you use uh, the smart board, you don't yeah. necessarily have to write everything you need to write. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we have a lot of data in education, and a lot of my work is to analyze data, or design yeah. and experiment and analyze it. So you said that you are working on a set of research questions such as yeah. uh, you, you were earlier describing how yeah. you are interested in uh, how uh, I mean, association between TOEIC yeah. test scores and listen, I mean, speaking ability and how yeah. that relation may vary by student yeah. characteristic or their, yeah. or their orientation. Yeah. yeah. That's a, I think that's a very interesting question because we often yeah. wonder, okay, many people, so many people are taking TOEIC tests. Yeah. Half of them are like, because their score is high, they can also use English and speak English. Yeah. The other half of people say, even though my score is high, I can't still speak it or I can't you know, communicate. 
Yeah. And that's a very important research question. Yeah. 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 Thanks. I'm interested in Well, it's a, uh, the very first year I, uh, we, we, I, and, um, well, I, I, I work with the, uh, sociologist um, and she's good at um, you know making questionnaire and analyzing um, uh, you know do, do some stat statistics and analysis and then we did a, a questionnaire uh, we wanted to look at uh, different things like uh, how grammar conscious they are or how 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 they do listening practice at home, uh, um, uh, what their uh, attitude towards speaking practice. So mm -hmm. we uh, look at, uh, we asked a lot of questions uh, in different area of language study, and then she did did it uh, factor analysis mm -hmm. with it. Uh, then, but. Uh, we found no relationship with uh, uh, student, uh, you know, those characteristics and the orientation with the TOEIC score and the speaking score. So we uh, decided to, you know, narrow narrow the focus, and then so two things we decided to look at: uh, native speakerism and willingness to communicate. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to give a presentation in November too at the JALT conference. Um, yeah, I have to, I have to um, analyze the data and come up with some kind of conclusion. That sounds very, very interesting. And the yeah. uh, conclusion you are trying to get at is very important. And uh, I would, uh, if I were, um, to advise, yeah, please. I would uh, interview people. Yeah, like select, let's say, ten kids who are really, really good. Yeah, but half of them don't communicate well in English, and the other yeah. half do, and then kind of talk to them and oh. see if you can get some qualitative information yeah. to derive insights on why. Yeah. Yeah. The disadvantage of quantitative analysis or statistical analysis, you have to have some ideas uh, prior to testing them. Yeah. In other words, statistical analysis is good at confirming your hypothesis. Yes. But it does not necessarily generate hypotheses. Right. I'm generally speaking. Yeah. So, yeah. But qualitative <laughs> analysis is good at finding things. And, yeah. You know, so that may be a useful thing to do. Sure, sure. Yeah. And we often try to mix qualitative and quantitative because yeah. Yeah. Um, we recognize uh, weakness of both approach. I mean, yeah. these approaches. Yeah. I would say quantitative analysis is kind of easier because just it's 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 pretty I don't know standardized. I yeah. feel like qualitative analysis is harder because you're dealing with uh, people and you have to make interpretations. You have to read stories. And yes. Stuff. So it's harder. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, one of the things I would like to do personally, but I haven't done it too much, is to evaluate effectiveness of Ego Nodo. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I have been working with a yeah. uh, professor in, uh, at Yamaguchi University. I teach oh, yeah. his class sometimes yeah. around April, and he yeah. compares uh, TOEIC results between groups. Uh, one group, yeah. they took my class, or they yeah. took my Skype class, and the other group they didn't. And yeah. we usually see differences, but our outcome is like uh, ability to differentiate sound such as L, L and R. Yeah. So it's kind of an easy one. Uh, yeah. So it's been showing results. 
Yeah. And I think he also tries to see uh, average TOEIC score differences between the two groups. Yeah. Let's see. That's interesting. Yeah. Many people say that when they do a lot of their listening comprehension improves a little bit, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, for example, today uh, on my website, nipponjurim.com, somebody joined. Um, my yeah. website as a member, and then he wrote in Japanese. When yeah. One of the items that you have to fill in to become a registered member of my website, he says, So he is from Tokyo, but he yeah. was able to improve. So I really want to be able to kind of test this sometime. Yeah, yeah. There are different levels of rigor in research. Yeah. Um, data mm -hmm. it's hard mm -hmm. to make a causal statement. You cannot say definitively if you do ankeito chosa. Yeah. If you do an experiment, then you yeah. can make a causal claim. Like yeah. um, because of this, it, uh, it improved students' uh, test scores. Yeah. So there's some gradation of uh, research rigor. I would like to try something that's rigorous, like um, yeah. an experiment. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to make two groups, group of students who have received intervention. Yeah. Some kind of special program. Yeah. Such as Ego Nodo or whatever you want to test. Yeah. The other group of students who do not receive the intervention, and you have to compare the two groups. Yeah. But the way you, you make the two groups have groups have to be random, yeah. to be very very rigorous. Then we don't random and take it away. Then, commonly, take it. No, rigorous. No, two groups. For example, let's try it with this class, classroom, forty kids. Let's try it with another class, forty kids. What's the result? But you have to show that both classes have the same kind of students. Yeah. Mm. So that's not completely random. So mm. we call it quasi experimental yeah. approach. But it's better than doing nothing or not having this group comparison. Yeah. Like in your case, maybe you can randomize students into two groups. One group, they teach you the, I don't know, uh, attitude. Like you really yeah. have to have a positive attitude kind of training. Yeah. And the other group don't do anything like that. And then they take tests. Uh, yeah. What happens to yeah. the score? Or if they are able to really communicate as an outcome. Yeah. Because your claim will be if you have a right attitude, your test score will be correlated with speaking ability or communication skill. Yeah. 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 Something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess it's been an hour, so maybe we'll. Yeah. Uh, how do you say in English? We'll call it off or we'll stop? Yeah, shall we stop? <laughs> yeah. Maybe nice. It's been nice talking with you. Maybe we'll reconvene again in a month. Yeah, or so. like uh, I don't know, once a month maybe. I don't know. Yes, and we'll. When, when is your conference? When is your your presentation at the conference? It will be um, around fourteenth of November or something. Oh yeah, yeah. M mine is a week after. Maybe if, I don't know. At the end of mm -hmm. November, we have a, a program together again, and then. Um, Talk about oh. a presentation. I don't know. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time, and I'll yeah, be you. in touch again. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye.